I know I always open with, it's been a while, but it really has been a while this time. A month, I think. Work's been very busy. Uh, still working on a potential move. Not a potential, it's going to happen. Uh, just the timing is unknown. Uh, moving to Southern California. Um, and I have been working on the house a lot. I had to get a new washer and dryer. But I have been buying some records. Uh, and I've been spending you know, a little bit more time with friends. Um, but mostly it's it's work, uh, which I love my job, so I'm really lucky. Um, but I have bought quite a few records after my, what did I have, like a two-month hiatus? Not even, six weeks, five weeks? Uh, I've got a bunch of shows coming up that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I, a little rundown. I saw Cat Power in Joshua Tree doing Dylan 1966. It was phenomenal, especially when the band went electric. Oh my God, she has such a great band. Uh, and it was at Pappy and Harriet's. I've never seen a show there. I've been there before, maybe 15 years ago, but just a wonderful place. The people were great. Drinks were great, food was great. Just loved it. I, I, it's another town that I could buy, that I could live in, Joshua Tree. It felt very much like home. Went to a great record store. Um, and coming up, what do I have? I have Jeff Tweedy twice in, in Menlo Park in a few weeks. This Saturday, I'm going to see Chris Corsano and Chris Corsano, Mike Watt, and I'm not sure, I can't remember the name of the third. Uh, individual. Uh, they're playing up in Pacifica. Chris Corsano is a crazy story. If anybody knows him, he uh, he's played with Tweedy. He, I think he put his first record out this year that's called The Key, which I, I bought and I really like. Uh, he's a drummer or percussionist, whatever, does a lot of jazz stuff. Um, he's played with many, many folks. Uh, I think Nels Klein, Mike Watt, whom I'm seeing this weekend. Uh, and just all over. I think he lived in upstate New York. He might live in Chicago now. And it's a crazy story because I bumped into Chris Corsano at Solid Sound the last time I went. So I think that was 2017, I think. I went 13, 15, 17, and I think I bumped into him the last time. Uh, I And I knew Chris because he and I interned at Bar Non Records in the summer of 1995. Uh, we were both really quiet. I remember we had like pizza a couple times. We like never went out for drinks or anything. It was, uh, it was a job. I've talked about that, that role I had at Bar None for the summer, which probably set my course in terms of being in the music business, which I now have been at least in some way uh, for a long, long time. Uh, but I hadn't seen Chris Corsano, and I'd heard like through a couple of listservs that he was a musician, but like very loosely. And then I bumped into him at Solid Sound. I was like, Chris? And he was like, Chris? <laughs> and we took a picture together. If I knew how to edit videos, I'd throw the picture up there, but i um, too lazy. Um, and he, we just chatted for a little bit. He told me he was like playing music and now his name just seems to pop up all over the place. So I'm really excited to go see him. I think I saw, yeah, I saw him play with Jeff Tweedy at Solid Sound. I think that same year, 2017. Only time I've ever seen him perform. So this weekend, it's in a club. Uh, so I'm probably going to spend the night up in Pacifica, like get an Airbnb or something. So looking forward to that. But point of this video is here are 11 records. Wait, I think, I, yeah, it's 11 that I've recently bought that I'm really excited about. And they each have a little story that I'll try to keep under one minute for each. This is the Hard Quartet, uh, which is another a new supergroup comprised of Stephen Malthmus, Emmett Kelly, Jim White, and Matt Sweeney. A bunch of artists that I absolutely love. Uh, Matt Sweeney might be my favorite guitar player, uh, or just overall favorite musician. I think he plays a ton of instruments. Uh, he's performed with Bonnie Prince Billy. Uh, he is in, he's one half of Super Wolves, so Bonnie Prince Billy and Matt Sweeney. Um, he's played Chavez, I think was his band, I think, in the 90s on, was it Drag City? Um, Stephen Malkmus, of course, from Stephen Malkmus and the Jicks, as well as Pavement. Emmett Kelly, 
played, it's a lot of Bonnie Prince Billy connections here. He played with Bonnie Prince Billy at the Henry Miller Library. I think it was in 2008. And I went, it's one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. Bonnie Prince Billy and Emmett Kelly. Uh, and Jim White, I think, plays in a bunch of bands. Um, haven't given this enough time. Uh, they're only playing a few shows, but really looking forward to listening to that. I've been looking for that record forever. This new Fleetwood Mac live show from the Mirage Tour, 1982, means a ton to me because I saw Fleetwood Mac on this tour. I was eight. <laughs> and my dad took us to see Fleetwood Mac at what was then the Brendan Byrne Arena. Is there even still an arena there anymore? Would be next to what I think is now called MetLife, which used to be Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. It's where the New Jersey Nets used to play and the New Jersey Devils used to play there. I saw Springsteen there a bunch, but he took us to see Fleetwood Mac. And I that was three years before seeing Bruce Springsteen live. I think around the same time we saw Bob Seger, maybe the same summer or fall. And those shows had a huge impact on me. Springsteen put it over the top when I was 11. Uh, but I remember Lane, my brother, who I talk about all the time, uh, had poison ivy. And I think both of his eyes were closed shut. <laughs> like one of them was like open a little bit and he still went to the show because he wanted to see it so bad. And we had such a good time. We were just kids. But I remember the joy of seeing the band come out. Uh, speaking of being a kid, I got this. Probably doesn't fit the mold, but Def Leppard Pyromania. Huge record when I was a kid. I saw them twice in 1987. Tesla opened once and Queensryche, Queensryche opened the other. It might have been back-to-back -back nights, 87 or 88. No, no, it wasn't. I think it was a few months apart. Uh, I used to always say it was back-to-back -back nights and then I found the tickets and I think it's a few months apart. So Pyromania, huge record for me as a kid. One of my first favorite rock bands. Randomly bought this at a record store because I'm getting into Nick Cave. And a lot of that is coming from reading his uh, website where he gives people advice, talks about grief. Uh, I've only read it a few times. I've wanted to go back uh, and it was just really powerful. I saw him interviewed recently. I think it was on Colbert. He was great. Everybody knows Nick Cave. He's got a new record uh, this year. I hope to see him live. And this is apparently one of his early best records. So excited to spin that. Speaking of the hard quartet and the Bonnie Prince connection, Bonnie Prince Billy connection, this is the Papa M record. Uh, I think I learned about this from Cassie, uh, from uh, Cassie Berman, David Berman's. Uh, ex-wife or, or maybe I don't know if they were still married uh sorry I don't want to get that wrong so I'm not, I, don't, I don't remember what the situation was but uh I think she posted about it we're, we're like friends on Instagram or something one social media site I also follow David Pajo uh so we're not friends I think I follow these two uh David Pajo who I've actually sent messages to after I saw him perform um with Gang of Four I sent him a note just saying it was incredible and sent him a picture and he replied he's like very sweet guy uh, so this is Ariel M, the Peel session, Sessions on Drag City. I think this has been around a long time and finally got a release. Uh, so David Pajo, who, as I mentioned, is now in Gang of Four. This I've been listening to nonstop, Bonnie Light Horseman. And I think my first take on them was it was, it was just no, maybe not my sound, but I've grown to love this record. I like their previous one too, but this one... Uh, Old Dutch, what a great song. Keep Me On Your Mind. And they I think they just played in Northern California and I missed it. I, th I think they were in Vancouver last night and I'm really bummed that would have gone to that show in a heartbeat. Um, I think I may have already shared this one. Skip James today. This came in, it's been a while. It's been a few months and I can't remember where I got this from. Craft Recordings. Haven't opened it yet, excited for that. Skip James, I learned about when I was in college. My buddy Fred sent me, or gave me a Skip James CD when I was a junior in college. And I've, I've been listening to him ever since and I'm really excited for that one. I don't have anything by Jesse Malin. Malin? Malin? Malin. Uh, some of you probably know the story. He um, had a, a, a very unexpected and sudden 
health crisis where I think he lost uh, his ability to walk or he may have been paralyzed from the waist down briefly. I, can't, I don't know the whole story. I'm, I'm not filling in these. I gotta do my research before I do these videos. Uh, but I saw a performance of his from CBS Sunday Morning recently where I think the song's called Argentina and I was just, I kept watching it over and over. He's sitting, um, so I don't know if, I think he, he's starting to walk again. Uh, and he's friends with Springsteen and a whole host of like New York folks that I used to know. That didn't, I wasn't insinuated that I know Springsteen, but like people from the village that I used to see at bars and shows. And I'm so sure I was in the same bar as Jesse Mellon at least once. Uh, and he, I saw the interview with him. It was just such a sweet interview. So I was excited to get this. It's called Glitter in the Gutter. The only Jesse Mallon record I have. So looking forward to listening to that. This also goes back to Barn on Records. So this is the very best, or the best of the Tender Sticks. Uh, I believe they're a UK band. I discovered them while at Barn on. Uh, this is best of the Tender Sticks, 1992 to 2021. So I knew the Tender Sticks. Uh, I'm trying to see if that song that I love is on here. It's not. Um, Tinder Sticks had an album that they put out on Bar None, and when I was there the summer of 1995, I sort of worked that album. I, like, mailed it out to, I think, mailed it out to some places, but that was one of my favorite records from that summer at Bar None. This, I saw an interview, still got tape on it up top, saw an interview with Matt Sweeney, where he talked, I think it was Matt Sweeney, where he talked about, like, his Perfect Ten record, and he said this, I think it was this one, Terry Stamp, Blue Redondo. Haven't opened it yet. It came damaged, but oh well. <laughs> I just mean like, it's a small label. Like I'm not gonna send it back. Um, it might even be his own label. So really looking forward to hearing that. And then finally, Emmylou Harris, Luxury Liner. It's wonderful to have an Emmylou Harris record that's pressed well. I have. Her records you can find in the bargain bins all over. They must have produced so, or manufactured so many of them back in the day. You can find them all over for five, ten bucks. Uh, Luxury Liner's got Poncho and Lefty, the town song. Uh, I'm just really excited for this. Haven't opened it yet. It's another, everything that Rhino does is unreal. They also reissued uh, a Grand Parsons record, uh, I think on the same date as this. So really looking forward to spinning this. Uh, this has She, Grand Parsons on it. Probably a bunch of Graham Parsons songs on here. Uh, Charlie Leuven, Chuck Berry, Graham Parsons, Luxury Liner. And that's the name of the album, right? Luxury Liner, yeah. So really looking forward to that. Uh, it's been a good time for music. I've, I've, I'm trying to pause again because I have so many records I still need to listen to, but uh, really enjoying it. Um, and I will talk to you soon. Hope you're all doing well. Take care.